starts in. So today, let me check for the notes. Okay. Okay, so today uh, we'll be looking at uh, chapter 25 uh, for the of the R4DS book, uh, which is about uh, web uh, scraping. So just this is just like we follow up uh, to the previous chapter where we look at hierarchical data, but today we'll be looking at how we can uh, scrape data uh, uh, from the web using uh, the, the RVS uh, package. So for, for the prerequisite for this chapter first, because since the RVS uh, package uh, in which we'll be working with uh, is not a member uh, of the core Tidyverse uh, package, so we need to load that package uh, separately. After we load library Tidyverse, uh, we also load uh, the RVS package. So for scraping data in the web, I think uh, the there are a lot of discussions in which uh, they went through in the book. Uh, they talked about the issue of ethics because we need, because there are certain uh, websites in which they have some uh, ethical issues in which uh, we need to consider before, because some of them, some of those sites, uh, they do not allow people, external users to just come to the web to script in data and use such data for what you want to use. So there are ethical issues. Uh, uh, in which and also in which we need to consider uh, before uh, we scrape such data in the web. So also they talk about the issue of uh, copyright. And uh, this one has to do with different, uh, it depends on the, where we are working from because like each, uh, each uh, country, they has their own copyright uh, law uh, because they also they say the copyright law is what complicated, but it is worth taking into look example, the US law. Uh, there are several things in which uh, uh, they do discuss uh, relating to the copyright issues of, of the book. But uh, the first part, uh, they talk about that every web page in which we are seeing, every web page, it has uh, a HTML basic uh, template. So there is a certain structure. We have the HTML, we can have the head, we can have the title of the page, the head, some body. We have the H1, which is the first heading. We have the P, which is for the paragraph. We can have image. We can have several other body because like uh, this site in which I'm looking at, I can just right click and go to inspect. Uh, we can inspect uh, the element. So once we inspect this element, we can see that it's a doc uh, type is uh, HTML. We can see the various, the head. This is the head tab, which is uh, content tab, content text, uh, which is a character. Uh, we can see we have several, uh, we can see the basic uh, structure of this HTML page. And we can see we have a opening div, and we can also see we must have a closing uh, div to close that HTML. Uh, that in which uh, we are seeing. Can I drop, screw this down so I can bring it this way so that we can you can easily see uh, the structure. We can see that it's a doc type HTML. We can see the head. We can see the uh, the the Angular uh, coli. Okay, so. Going back uh, to the notes, so we can see that every HTML page we see we have basic uh, we have basic uh, structure of that page. Uh, we have a basic structure. So for the elements, uh, for the elements, they say that there are 100 HTML elements. Some of the most important are every HTML page must be in an HTML element. So we might we must have a head. We can have H1 header, which is heading one. We can have P, which is for P tag, which is for paragraph. Uh, we can have this, which is for order list. Uh, B, which is for bold. This is for italics. This is for link. So uh, this these are all the HTML tag. We they also look at uh, how 
how we can easily uh, extract uh, data in which we found in the web. Maybe for example, this is a URL, we need to pass in the URL. That URL, we pass it to the read underscore HTML function that is coming from the, from the RVS package. We pass in the URL as a string and we save it as an HTML. So when we call the HTML, we show it, it is HTML document. Uh, the HTML, the language is English. We can see uh, uh, all the, the various tags uh, in which we have in that HTML page. So we can easily see this, how this works out in R. If I switch back to R, if I switch back to R, we can have library. Tidy verse. I hope you are seeing my house studio. No, no, I, I, I can still see the book at the moment. Okay, sorry, sorry. I did not share my entire screen. Let me share my entire screen. Okay. I see, yeah, I can see it now. Alves, so when we see this, okay, we can see we load in that HTML, okay? So we can view the HTML here. We can see that we have head, we have some metadata. We can also view it in our studio, we can view it. HTML, we can view it. We can see that we have the head and I can view the head tag. Uh, you can see this is the head. So, sorry. This is the HTML. We can see that we have HTML document, HTML language, English. This is the body. They have some hidden information. So when we look at uh, when we look at also uh, the body, could not find HTML child for the body. So when we look at the HTML itself, and this is what we see in the book. So let me switch back uh, to the book. So they also discuss that it's not an every time. Uh, because it's not in every time the RVS package, uh, we can easily create a structure HTML using uh, the RVS. So they have HTML, we have minimal HTML, the paragraph, this is a paragraph, then they have the closing uh, diff, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the bulleted list, they have some bulleted list and they have a closing diff because here we have uh, we have a we have the we we have a opening div, so we need to close uh, that div here. So when we run this in our studio, we can see that we can easily uh, generate uh, this HTML uh, in R. So I can call this. Okay, so we we can run this which is the same thing in which uh, we saw uh, earlier on. This is the same thing we can generate it uh, uh, using, uh, using R code. Okay. Yeah. So what again in which they discuss find elements. I think this, okay, this one mainly refers, this section mainly refers to how can we find uh, various elements in the page in which uh, we are working on, just like I explained, we can have P, which is uh, elements, which stands for the paragraph, uh, dot title, which is element class title. So we, but we can be interested in different elements. We can need a table from the HTML page. So we need to know how we can call those specific tags uh, in the page in which we are looking at. So here we have the main minimal HTML, uh, we have this, uh, okay? So in this case, we have, we call the HTML and then we say HTML element, we want to get, we want to extract all the P tags from this HTML page. So when we call this P, that the tag in which we want to retrieve should be all the paragraph tags. So we can see we have how many? One, we also have two. So we have two uh, paragraph tags. 
So in this other example is we have HTML and then HTML uh, elements. So we want to retrieve all the tag that contain dots important. So we want to retrieve all the tags in that page, web page in which we are working with uh, that contains uh, these uh, dots important. So it shows that we have XML nodes and one. And we also have P class, which is important. Uh, this is an important uh, paragraph. So we can see that we have been able to retrieve all the tags, all the elements that has this tag dot important. So we can also say we want to retrieve all the elements that, that contain first. We want to retrieve uh, all the elements that contain the first. So here we have HTML. And then we have HTML elements, so we pass in that first tag. So we can see that we have P ID, which is we have the first here. This is a paragon P. Okay, so I don't know, Tim, if uh, up to this point, are there any questions? So feel free. Uh, no, no, that's all okay. Thank you. Okay, so let me proceed. So this is the same example. I think it was also retrieving all the P tags from, the, from our web page. So we can see we have retrieved, uh, we have retrieved all the P tags uh, from that web page. So we have also this example, we have HTML, and then we say HTML elements that start with B. So we can see that we are having HTML nodes zero because there is no tag uh, in that web page that uh, contain uh, this B. So in that case, it returns a, a zero data frame back. So when we say HTML and then HTML elements B, we can see we are having XML missing any because we do not have such information uh, in that web page. So at times it might return any, it might return zero data frame base because we can see we have elements, HTML elements with S. This one returns zero. We also have HTML elements without S because there are two different HTML tags. So we need to be uh, very uh, careful so we can look at uh, the documentation. We can look at the documentation, HTML underscore elements. Sorry, elements. HTML elements, so we can see. I need to restart. Let me see. Let me use another example from here. Okay. Just click. I was working in different our studios, so we just say library. Our vest library id verse okay i run this uh it's taking time to run what is this Oh. HTML underscore elements. We have this. Okay. We can see that it's coming for our very select element from an HTML document. So we can see we can also have the same HTML element with S, it's still the same thing, uh, but the bots. Uh, the both functions, they are going to return a different result. They said HTML elements, HTML elements, find HTML element using CSS selectors or X path expression. So we can use it, but the both return, they are, they are results in which they are going to give us, you can see here, we are having a zero, here we are having any, because no such information exists. Uh, 
in that web page in which we are trying to scrape data from. So we can also have nesting uh, selection. They also talk about the nesting selection where we can have minimal HTML. We can have of this nested uh, structure. We can nest uh, this HTML into a different structure. Then we can look for all the tags that has L1. So we can see here uh, is the characters. When we call these characters, because we want to select all the tags that are of L1, we can see that we return all those tags back. So when we return all the tags that contain paragraph B, we can see that we have this uh, all selected from the page. Uh, we can also return all the tags that has dot weights. Okay, so when we have dot weights, we can have this, we can have this, and we can have this. These are all contain uh, the weights. Uh, we can also check for all uh, STM elements that has uh, dot weights. We can see that we have these uh, three items that has uh, the, uh, the dot weights. So here we have text and attributes. So we can want to get both the text out of it, this page and also alongside uh, with the attributes. So here we have characters and then we said HTML elements that has the B and then HTML text two because HTML text two is going to help us to extract the plain text content of an HTML element. So we can see we have this text, uh, we also have this, which are all strings. So for the attributes, we have characters and then HTML elements. Then we have HTML text two, we have uh, 167 kg, we have NA, we have 96 kg, we also have uh, 66. Uh, kilogram from that uh, page. Uh, this part, what are they saying here is the same example we are having here. Here we have HTML and then we look at the elements that has the P tags, also look at the elements that has the A tags and also HTML attributes that has href, which is the, we want to retrieve uh, the URL of that page in which we are we're trying to script uh, the data from. So we, we retrieve all the P paragraph tags. We retrieve all the tags that has A from the web page. We also retrieve the HTML attributes. Within the HTML attribute, we say we want the, it to give us the URL of that web page. We can see that we were able to retrieve uh, that URL, which is this is the first URL. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, URL. So those are the simple tricks which we can use the alves we can use it to script for data in any web page and uh in which in which we are working on but alternatively if we are not really familiar we can browse for we can go to the developer tools and begin to check within the developer tools uh we can see that here we have the p tag we can see all those tags p tags we can see this is a div uh, we can see this is a tag for section, so we can check for all some of those tags uh, within here. Then we now go back to our studio. Uh, after we have inspected the page in which we are working on, we can just inspect those page, look at all those tags. Then we now fall back and uh, specify uh, those tags in which we want to retrieve those information in case uh, we are not sure of which particular tags in which uh, we want to return. So we can just look at the developer tools. So when we look at the developer tools, we look at inspect. Uh, when we inspect, we look at those page. Uh, we can see that those tags, we can pick each of those tags. Then we now fall back and uh, retrieve those specific information uh, in which we need want to retrieve from that web page. So this one is about returning tables. Maybe we are interested. Uh, we want to get tables uh, from the page. So just have a simple table here, okay? So, so we have a simple table. Uh, we can say HTML. The HTML elements you want to return is dot my table. So we can, I can look at the developer tool where we call dot my table. Uh, we can look for the tables. Body. A bar, section, section, page two, p tags, 
Gold section, a section. I can see. Uh, oh, just come past. I thought. You said look down a bit from there. Okay. Where's it gone? I thought I saw it a bit further. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So we can see that we have the ID tables, data number. This is the section. So we can see this is tables. You can see the table is there. So I can collapse this a little bit. Uh, this is table. ID is tables. Data number and call. Uh, so we can also collapse this a bit. Uh, this is tables, number, span. So we can see that this is this is a table. So that is how we just keep, keep on inspecting at the page. So we now call the dot my table to retrieve the table. And then we said HTML underscore table. So we are going to see that this is a table uh, in which we are we have been able to return. So, but they also mention about we finding the right selectors. I think this is also a very uh Big topic because we need to be familiar with uh, CSS. We need to know uh, CSS. Uh, we need to know CSS uh, uh, in in depth. We need to know. Uh, 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 we need to be get ourselves. Uh, we need to get ourselves uh, familiar uh, with CSS. I posted a link to the selector gadgets for CSS uh, in the chat. So here they talk about uh, putting it all together. So how do we storm up all this uh, together? Uh, they explore using this simple uh, case study where we have our sections uh, with the various, uh, uh, we, read in, we read in our URL of the web page in which we want to script. Uh, we use the read underscore HTML to read in that uh, web, uh, the, the link. And then we have section. HTML and then HTML elements, we want to retrieve all the sections. So when we call section, uh, we can see uh, we can see that we have all these, these are all the sections in which uh, we have in that uh, uh, in that page. Uh, we have section and then HTML elements, we want to return all header two and then HTML text two. So HTML text two will always return text for us. HTML text two will always return text. We can see we have random menace, attack of clones, uh, revenge of the seeds, a new hope, the empire strike back, return of Jedi, the first. So we also have this in the page uh, where we have section and then HTML elements uh, dot director. This is going to retrieve all the director and then we say HTML text two. We can see that we have been able to retrieve all the directors that can be found uh, in that web page in which uh, we were working on. So in this case, they did the same thing here. Uh, here they return str remove release to remove all the released. Uh, they, also, they, they also retrieve all the directors uh, they also retrieve all the crawl and then they say HTML uh, text too. So what this is going to return, this is going to return a table for us where we can now use uh, this table. We can now use this table for further analysis, maybe uh, data visual, we can use it to visualize, uh, uh, to create data visualization for so in this case, uh, the second case study, I think they bring, this is the URL they want to script. They read in the URL, then they have table, which is HTML and then HTML elements. They want to get all the table and then HTML table to convert it to table. So once they call table, uh, we can see that this is, uh, this is the table. Uh, what's uh, yeah, 
Okay, it's still the same. I think we have table and then the select rank and title. They renamed it to be rank title here. And then IMDB ratings, it should be ratings. And then the same motet, rank title here, STR replace, rank title here, where we have N to replace with a plus. And they also add empty string. Then they were using uh, this year, they use uh, the separate wider regex. Uh, where they specify the regular expression, where those regular expression is meet, is returns true, then, then it's going to return this ratings uh, table back uh, for us, which we can use for further exploration. Uh, this, okay, this is similar to what we have discussed about. They return all the elements that have TD strong, and then they use, look for the head, and then, HTML attribute should be in all the title, which will return, which will return uh, the title for us. So for the last uh, part, uh, they will look at uh, some, uh, they look at some dynamic sites where they say that so far we are focused on websites where HTML MN returns what you see in the browser and discuss how to pass it returns and how to organize the information uh, in in the data frame so 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 we can see that uh, they are uh, they, we can see uh, that uh, the harvest uh, package though I am not uh, very much uh, vast uh, with the harvest because I have not done a lot of work use because majority of the work I do uh, they do not require me to go uh, online to use the web API to scrape uh, some data. So majority of the work I do, the data is always there. We always uh, visit the field, we collect uh, our data, then we, we import, we, we start cleaning process before the analysis. So the Alves uh, package, we have seen that it's a very good package in which we can use to uh, communicate uh, with the web, to scrape data that, that are, in the web page in which we are seeing every day, which is the every HTML page, we can use the RVS package uh, to communicate with that HTML page. We can scrape any information, but they do discuss in the book about the ethics so that we should be very much familiar with the site we want to scrape. Are there some ethical consideration in which uh, we need to consider uh, before uh, we can scrape data from that website. So let's do discuss that we should always put that uh, into consideration. So I think uh, that is uh, basically uh, all. Uh, the next, we'll now go to the next part, which is a very interesting part about function in R. So I will encourage, I don't know if for today, if Tim, you have questions. No, no, that, that's all good. Thanks, Olio Femi. Yeah, I think like you, I don't really do much web scraping, but it's nice to know that it's there if you want it. 